string with a weight tied at its midpoint, and we can see that the length from here to here to the midpoint is uh, 13 centimeters or 0.13 meters, and therefore the length of the whole piece of string will be 26 centimeters or 0 0.26. Now we're going to take the same piece of string, remember it's 26 centimetres long, 0 0.26 uh, metres long. We're going to place it at this point P here, and then we're going to pull it down to this point, which is now 40 centimetres or 0.4 of a, a metre, okay? And we can see that the, this weight here is more than halfway along the along the string. If we were to pull it down, you can see that this will become um, relaxed. Okay, this will not be taut at the bottom here. Okay, we'll look at this later. Okay, now we need to look at this in a bit more detail. So, this is a point P, this is a point Q, things in equilibrium, the natural length of the, uh, of the original string is 0 0.26 metres it's been stretched to 0 0.4 meters so what will happen is that as this was in the midpoint this bit here will be 0 0.13 meters and there'll be a stretch here and the bottom bit here will be 0 0.13 meters which is half of the natural length okay so this this one and plus this one add up to the original natural length so we've got one extension here and one extension here and this together will be 0 0.14 meters of obviously of this one add up to 0 0.4 meters and we've got a force acting upwards which we're going to call the tension on one a force acting downwards here this is the tension of the string acting downwards t2 and also we've got the weight of that mass times the weight also acting downwards and of course we've got gravity in g meters per second squared so this is in equilibrium. So we've got this. This is our problem. A weight of mass of 0 0.12 kilograms is attached to the midpoint of a light elastic string of length 0 0.26 meters, and the modulus of el elasticity is lambda newton. The string is then stretched vertically between point P at the top and point Q at the bottom, which are 0 0.4 meters apart. So this is point P and this is point Q. Find in terms of lambda the extensions of the two parts of the string. So we've got to find that extension there and that extension there, but in terms of lambda. Calculate the values in the case where, that the modulus of elasticity is 7.6, i.e. lambda 7.6, and find the minimum value of lambda so that we're sure the lower half of the string will not slack. If you remember at the end of the video, it, what will happen if this bit here is slacked? Well, I showed you, showed you that in the video. So, if we resolve vertically, well, vertically we've got T1 acting upwards and T2 plus 0 0.12G acting downwards. So, T1 must be equal to T2 plus 0 0.12 times G. We'll call that equation 1. And this is because the whole thing is in equilibrium. There's no acceleration. Applying Hooke's law to both the upper part and the lower part of the string. So to, to the upper part, Hooke's law is the t is equal to lambda times x divided by the natural length. So if we just consider the top half, the natural length is just half of it, which is 0 0.13. So we've got the upper part that t1 must be equal to lambda times x1 divided by 0 0.13, which is half of the original length. We'll call that equation 2. And for the lower part, T2 will be lambda times X2 divided by 0 0.13. That's the natural length of the lower part. This length here is 0 0.13 from here to here. We'll call that equation 3. Right. If we now substitute 2 and 3 into 1, we're going to get lambda times X1 over t divided by 0 0.13 is equal to lambda times X2 divided by 0 0.13 plus the 0 0.12 times g. 
Rearranging that, so we're taking the 0 0.13 up to the other side, we're going to get lambda x1 minus lambda x2, taking this over the other side, is equal to 0 0.13 times 0 0.12, which is 0 0.0156 times g. So x1 minus x2 is equal to 0 0.0156 g divided by lambda, we'll call that equation 4. Now, we do know from the diagram that x1 and x2 must add up to 0 0.14. So if we now do 4 plus 5, x1 plus x1 gives me 2x1 is equal to 0 0.14 plus this bit here, which is 0 0.0156g divided by lambda. Divided by 2, we're going to get that x1 is 0 0.07 plus 0 0.0078g divided by lambda. That's the expression for x1. And for the expression for x2, we need to do 5 take away 4. So we need to do this one take away this one. So that's going to give me 2x2, because we're going to get x minus minus 1, 2, my, x2 minus minus x2, which gives me 2x2, 0 0.14 again, minus 0 0.0156g divided by lambda. So we get x2 is 0 0.02 minus 0 0.00. 7, 8 times g divided by lambda. If we now call that equation 6, because we need that for the last part. If we now take g to be equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, so when, la when the modulus of elasticity is 7.6 newtons, x1 will be equal to 0 0.07 plus 0 0.0078 g divided by 7.6 which gives me 0 0.08 metres, and x2, uh, that's to the nearest centimetre, is 8 centimetres, so x2 will be 0 0.07 minus 0 0.078g divided by 7.6, and that has to give me 0 0.06 metres. These two, remember, must add up to 0 0.14 metres, which they do. Now, what is the value of lambda so that the bottom part won't be slack? Well, if the bottom part's slack, then there will be no extension. So we want the uh, x2 to be bigger than 0. We want the extension to be bigger than 0. Then the lower part will not be slack. So if we take equation 6, which is 0 0.07 minus 0 0.078 g over lambda is greater than 0. This is x2 in terms of lambda. Rearrange the inequality, we get 0 0.0078g divided by lambda is greater than 0 0.07. Lambda will be greater than, so we're taking that over there, this up here. Sorry, we're going to invert the inequality. Now when you invert the inequality, you need to change the... Uh, So when you take this over to the other side, it should be the inequality sign should be this way round, and then when you do the reciprocal, you must invert the inequality sign. So lambda must be bigger than 0 0.0078g divided by 0 0.07. Therefore, lambda must be bigger than 1.092 newtons in order for there not to be any slack in the bottom, like the end of the first part of the video. So this has been a video to show you how to deal with Hooke's Law with more than one string or spring. So what we've done, we've taken the same string and split it into two equal uh, strings.